Hobby Quick Hits. Delivering that breaking hobby news. Directly to your earlobes. You want to know those hot drops from the card shop? We've got you covered. With your host, John Newman. All right. Welcome to another edition of Hobby Quick Hits. Today's episode about pricing. How do I price my cards? It's a question I get more often than I thought I would. It might come from the fact that some folks know uh, I set up and do shows. uh, And so they're wondering, you know, how do I determine what to price my cards at? And uh, people know I price cards because I did an episode about how I've always priced my stuff. You know, when, when you go to shows, you see dealers, right? They really fall into one or two sides, right? Those that pr- have prices on their cards or those that have no prices where you have to ask. Well, I'm a, a pricer for reasons I've said on that episode. Check it out if you want to uh, know why. But, but most of the obvious reasons, right? People don't like to ask uh, how much stuff is. But, you know, I get asked, where do I get my pricing? And quite frankly, it's not you know, there's a predominant answer, but it's not the only answer. So we're going to dive into this subject here uh, right after we hear from our great sponsors, Mojo Breaks. And after that, we're going to hear about the new releases for the week. We're going to go over the news and the question and answer, and then we'll tackle the subject of pricing. MojoBreakShop.com is the best place to get your sealed wax products and breaks. They not only have the best selection, but the best prices. Whether it's a box or a whole case, they are your guys. They ship worldwide to your doorstep. Their reputation as one of the most trusted in the hobby goes unmatched. They are the 2021 Topps Rip Party Champion Breakers. From sports card to Pokemon cards, their selection can't be beat. They offer daily deals and pre-orders. Hey guys, John Newman here. Mojo's prices are already great, but to save an additional 10% off anything in their store, use the code QUICKHITS. That's Q-U-I-C-K-H-I-T-S. Check out the full service store that's open seven days a week in Santa Clara, California, or the website at mojobreak.com. Time for this week's Incoming! product releases. All right, what's coming out this week on the 15th, 2022 Onyx Vintage Collection Baseball? Same day, 2021 Panini Flawless Football. Yep, 2021. The football stuff is finally starting to uh, catch up. Uh, also on the 15th, 2021-22, Panini Obsidian Soccer. Uh, staying on the same day, 2021, Panini Prism Football No Huddle. Also on the 15th, 2021-22, Tops UEFA Women's Champions League Chrome Soccer. There's a mouthful. Also on the 15th, 2021-22, uh, Upper Deck Series 2 Hockey, going to the 17th, Pokemon Divergent Powers 10, and Pokemon Professor Juniper Premium Tournament Collection. Uh, On the 17th, 21-22, Pro Set Power Basketball. On the 17th, Yu-Gi-Oh! Legendary Duelist 9. And that is the week in product releases Choose your weapon. Happy ripping. Let's go round the hobby verse and catch up on this week's hobby news. Two more hobby store break ins. One in Chicago, Elite Sports Cards on the north side of Chicago had a hundred thousand dollars worth of cards taken, including uh, a Gaudi Babe Ruth, a 1950. Jackie Robinson and a Michael Jordan rookie sticker 
sealed on the back of an 86, 87 FLIR basketball pack graded by PSA. That perpetrator uh, managed to get burglar bars off the back, uh, pry, uh, chisel some brick, and get in and made a beeline right for the case that had all this stuff and cleaned that whole case out. And uh, so it looks like that person probably scoped the store out, uh, and the owner said as much that he believes he doesn't know the person's name, but he has him on video a few days earlier who he believes is the person responsible uh, for this. Uh, on the surveillance tape, uh, it looks like he's also handing the backpack that he put the cards in to someone else. So probably two two people involved uh, also had what looked like a walkie-talkie on his hip. So probably a lookout to communicate uh, uh, what's going on in the outside. Uh, inside, doesn't stop there. Uh, Reno, Nevada, home team sports. This one uh, was even more brazen. Uh, someone stole a van and then used that stolen van with a chain, tied it to the door slash window of home team sports, and then basically pulled away, pulling that door out and part of the window, then went inside and stole about $50,000 worth of sports cards. And uh, going back to the one in Chicago, the owner is offering a reward for the uh, capture of said uh, perpetrator. But, you know, this is getting to be almost a daily occurrence, and it's uh, it's a shame. You know, folks try to build their business only to have have somebody you know criminal uh just uh, break it down so uh, hopefully uh, those folks responsible are apprehended you might recognize that theme song as john cena's Entry music. Well, John Cena is entering the hobby in kind of uh, form this fall. uh, It has not been named yet, but he's going to be the host of a collectible show where people who have unique cards, uh, John Cena, will host the show where they check those uh, unique cards out. It is brought to you by ITV America, the same folks that brought you Pawn Stars and filming. uh, It will debut. uh, It's an unnamed show, but it will make its debut uh, this fall. You can find out information about it online. And if you think you got it, what it takes for John Cena to visit you and check out your card or slash collection, uh, contact them as they are uh, starting production on that unnamed show. PSA has opened up their value level, the $30 20-card minimum service to everybody. Last week it was just Collectors Club members, but now it's to the general uh, public. Uh, All cards have to be 1996 or newer and under $1,000. And their economy service uh, is available uh, for fifty dollars is the lowest level uh, for economy. <music> Fanatics Tops has announced they have a new agreement in place for collegiate trading cards, uh, which will inco- encompass over a hundred fifty universities or colleges, and includes uh, over 200 uh, men and women of uh, college athletes. So going to get more Bowman uh, University products, probably with that first Bowman logo on it. You know, again, the debate of what will be a real rookie will continue. And uh, also, the, the interesting thing to me is they're going to be able to do Tops Now cards, you know, those instant print uh, when a record gets broken or something of significance happens. But now they can do this on the collegiate level. And that that will be real interesting. So 
if a Tops Now card is the first produced card of that athlete and they go on to become, you know, a superstar, a Hall of Famer in their uh, respective sport, you know, we, we might be looking at, especially if it's a lower print run Tops Now, obviously they print to demand uh, of how many people order, but just opens up the door for a lot of different things. Not good news if you ask me for Panini because this is one of the things they were could still hang their hat on. And, um, you know, now the one thing I want to say about this deal is it's not all exclusive. So the other companies can produce uh, cards as well, but I believe they will have some exclusive athletes. Uh, who uh, is not announced yet, but uh, they will apparently have some. So it's going to be interesting to see what products come out of it, how, you know, Fanatic slash Tops uh, handles it and uses this new licensing agreement along with the other ones as well. All right, let's end the news segment on a happy note. 13-year-old Johnny Stone from Ohio pre-ordered some, him and his dad pre-ordered some Prism football boxes. Uh, obviously, they were delayed, but finally got them. Well, it was worth the wait for the Stone family. Uh, as they pulled, or or Johnny pulled, a one-of-one one black finite Mac Jones rookie. They do operate a sports card uh, company out of their house called Stone Sports Cards. They quickly sold the Mac Jones one-of-one one for $100,000. And that buyer sold it uh, after that to the next guy or person for $175K. So that card has been... Uh, flipped or sold twice, if you will, once for 100k, and uh, again for 175. The Stone family said they will uh, be using that money. Uh, well, well, Johnny's going to get a new gaming computer, and they're going to be attending uh, the National and Atlantic City. So maybe we'll try to catch up with them and uh, talk to them about their uh, their incredible pull that. Uh, you know, turn into a big sale for them. Time for the segment where you ask me a question and I answer it here on the podcast. All right, another question from our website, which is very cool. Glad to see that getting some more activity. This is from Will. And Will basically asked me, hey, you know, like Breaking Cardboard, uh, your live show you did once a month, uh, but you haven't been doing it. Uh, what's the status of the show? Well, well, uh, I I've, haven't done it in a couple months, I think three months and uh, uh, maybe four. I just got real busy and it was hard to uh, commit and get guests. And uh, just, you know, with the other show that I do, which is Live Hobby Hotline, it, it just become... Uh, you know, a little bit hard to do. So uh, is it over? I, I won't say it's over. I still, you know, if I get the the right, uh, you know, it's a co-host show. If I get a, a co-host and, and guests or a guest or guests, and, you know, it's, it's, it's not dead, but it's not going to be what I first envisioned it, which was once a month. I think it'll just be like a, a special edition uh, that I'll announce when I have sort of a panel that, uh, goes after a certain topic. So we'll, we'll kind of make it a special panel show uh, when we do it. And, uh, you know, rather than be once a month, it'll just be when I can schedule it. So it's not dead, but it's not going to be once a month like I was hoping either. And now, our feature presentation... All right, let's talk about pricing. Again, it's a question I get asked. Where do you come up with your prices? How do you determine, you know, what to price your cards at? Um, and again, it's it's going to be a multiple answer type question. Let me go back in history as I often tend to do uh, because uh, I've been doing this a while. Uh, so one of the earlier, it was sort of a regional price guide. I cannot find 
any information on it. When I Google this, I remember using a paperback publication in the in the probably early eighties, uh, you know, mid eighties, uh, called I think it was called SCP. I don't standard card pricing. I think it stood for. I don't, I'm I'm not even sure. That that's sort of a guess uh, to to my memory. Uh, again, it was a not a big publication. You know, about twenty to forty pages, uh, and uh, they list, listed uh, you know from the forties to the eighties uh, all the stars and the prices, and then they gave what comments should go for. It would come out. Uh, every month, and I'd, I'd go to the card store. I don't even know if I bought it every month, but I got it every so often just to see what they said the cards are worth. And then we all know what came along, right? The Bible, I called it, uh, of pricing, right? Uh, uh, Dr. James Beckett uh, created his, his price guide, starting with uh, baseball. And the uh, I think 84 was the f- number one issue. Now I wasn't I, I I don't remember being that early on it, but uh, probably about eighty five uh, for me that was when uh, I started paying attention to to that guide, and then uh, obviously that that empire grew, and that became the 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 Bible, if you will. I hate to use a, a religious book, but it really was the gold standard of pricing. Everyone had. A Beckett magazine, right? Dealers had them at the shows. Uh, some collectors had it, you know, kind of rolled up uh, in their back pocket just to kind of check, uh, you know, what the book said and what a dealer was trying to get uh, for their card. And uh, that's really what I use. And we all wanted to see that pointing up black triangle, right? That was as dealers and, and even as collectors, right? We wanted our stuff uh, to go up. Uh, we didn't want to see that downward pointing triangle. That meant our stuff was going down. And it became the number one uh, used uh, price guide at, when I had my store uh, from uh, 92 to 97. I sold them all. Uh, I was, uh, you know, with Beckett as far as a, a dealer. We'd get our, our shipments uh each week uh, of each uh, sport uh, back price guide and put them on our stands and customers would come in and buy it. We'd obviously take our store copy and look through, you know, first thing we did, right? Look through it. What, what went up or, or we'd even debate, right? What uh, did it go up enough? Oh man, it should have, should have went up higher than that. Right. We all had those uh, conversation or I thought it was going to, rise more than that or why did this go up you know and th- those were always uh fun times and for a long time that was the standard right and then ebay came along and uh but not in its infancy stages they had to build up a reputation and i think they became sort of the st- market standard if you will you know ebay kind of sold comps and as they kind of uh you know, cleaned up their their act and and their platform where you could get more information. I think they sort of became, uh, you know, where we got our prices from as well. So, you know, obviously we have a lot of charts and analytics here in in 2022. And so I'm going to answer the question, you know, how do you price your stuff? I'm going to answer for me. Now, this is only the tools and, and platforms that I use today okay that doesn't mean that it's the only answer it's just my answer right i and and i'll, I'll try to put it in sort of uh an, an order if you will i think ebay comps for me is probably you know ebay sold listings uh is probably the first place i i look uh to get sort of uh what what this card may be worth uh i do use uh card ladder i do use uh, collects now it's a it's an app where you scan your card uh you know that's in the mix and uh you know that's pretty much what i use now there's some cards we all know these cards right and it's good if you have them because it usually means it's rare or, or not obviously a comic card right pop one cards or or card where there's no uh you know comps to compare it to and you know i get asked well what do you do in that if you don't have anything 
really to compare it to. You, you know, you just try to find another similar type player in that 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 kind of uh, card and sort of get a comp, you know, of a sold listing. Uh, the grading has changed sort of, you know, comps too. We got, you know, a, a raw card and a graded card are most likely going to bring uh, different values, and so you that that you know qualifies it uh, even more. But if you have one of those like pop one or not a lot of comps, sometimes you gotta just wing it, right? I've I price stuff where there's you know not a ton of comps, and you just uh, price it what you kind of want to sell it for. You know, a lot of factors go into that. What do I have into this? Did I buy it? What did I pay? Uh, you know how the player's performance if they're still a current player, what, you know, how bad you want to sell something uh, really goes into how you price stuff. I'd be, I'm not going to come on and turn this mic on and, and be dis, disingenuous. That's not what I'm known for. I'm not going to start now. I'll be honest with you. I priced some of those kind of cards, maybe a little higher, because quite frankly, I, I, I know I'll miss them a little bit if they sell. So I price them sort of high. Remember, if you're pricing your stuff as a dealer or as a seller, you know, whether that be online or at in person at a show, it's easier to come down in price than you can't go up, right? If you mark something 20 bucks, just for example, you can't ask the person, hey, we pay 25 for that, right? But if you mark something, you know, 20 bucks, we'll keep it the, the same price. You can, you know, someone can offer you 15 and if you deem like, hey, I'll, I'll take the 15 you can make the sale. So I sort of price, I'm not I'm giving away, I don't want to say a secret, but a little bit of sort of my MO. I, I, not probably across the board, but there are certain cards where I'll price it a little bit higher knowing that I'm going to probably be, the cards are probably going to be bargained for uh, for a, a lower a lower price tag. So I kind of baked that in there. Again, not on every card. Uh, I do price all my cards. Now, I will say every once in a while, I'll miss one. Uh, maybe it's something I just acquired uh, in a collection and in, in the haste to get it uh, out in the cases or in the show inventory. I'll forget to, uh, you know, price it with my pricing gun. There are, a, a, not common, but there are a couple exceptions where it'll be a card that I purposely won't price. It's one of those Big time fluctuating, probably an expensive card, right? That's I'll have to wait till someone says, "Hey, what are you looking to get uh, on that?" So I, I'd say I price ninety eight percent of my cards. So for every hundred cards that are either in my showcase or in my boxes that people rife through, uh, ninety eight out of a hundred are going to have a full set price tag on them. And then there's the the rare cards where I'll just and it'll be in my showcase. Uh, where I just leave it sort of blank for someone to, to kind of negotiate or, or talk about. It might be even a card that just is so volatile, right, whether it's going up or down or, or both potentially uh, based on performance. I'll sort of leave it blank, you know, leave it unpriced so I'm not just pricing it every 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 week or, or two weeks, that, that thing. But most of my stuff's priced, again, uh, eBay is probably my go. eBay sold comps is probably my go-to. Card ladder is another tool I use. Collect X. And sometimes, honestly, if I have some cards, and you know, if you're if you're around cards enough, and I think some folks that are sellers uh, and dealers out there, when they hear this, they're going to be nodding their heads, right? Sometimes you just do this long enough, or you you just pricing enough, uh, you you just kind of know where stuff's at without having to look it up and you can just price it off the top of your head, so to speak, right? I mean, frankly, the only time I actually look is when a card I'm not sure about or I don't want to wing it. So there are a lot of times I wing it just because I know I'm in the ballpark. I'm not going to be way off, you know, and the cards where I'm like, I'm not really sure what this is doing uh, right now one way or the other, then, then I might... Uh, look it up and you know when it comes to pricing cards right that's it's all arbitrary right they're your cards you can price you know your wanna rebate 1990 Fleer for you know eight hundred thousand dollars if you want to good luck getting it uh in a legitimate non-money laundering sort of way uh it's a joke there but again you can price your stuff 
uh, any way you want. And again, I, like I said, I'm guilty as charged. There are some things I'm a little attached to, but uh, I do want to sell, and I'll just put it out there with maybe a, a higher sticker on there. And, uh, you know, knowing I'm probably going to be asked to take less and just uh, part, part of me doesn't really want to sell it. I used to be worse when I was younger with getting attached to cars than than I am uh, in my, uh, you know, in my 40s and 50s. So, you know, when it comes to pricing, there's really no one set answer. I, I know eBay comps is kind of the the market standard for most, but it doesn't, it's not the end all be all. It doesn't have to be. You can use uh, other tools if you so choose. So I hope this episode kind of clarified a little bit uh, on pricing. Again, there are also other pricing tools and analytics that I didn't mention because, quite frankly, I don't have any experience or use of them. Uh, you know, uh, we all know kind of what they are and who they are. You can, uh, you know, go out there and, and, you know, choose your choose your weapon, as they say, when it comes to pricing. So we're going to give out our some social media credentials. And after that, I'll come back with some closing thoughts. All right, thank you for listening to another episode of Hobby Quick Hits. Want to give out our social media, starting with our website, which is www.sportscarnationpodcast.com. Facebook, you can follow us at www.facebook.com forward slash sportscarnationpodcast forward slash. Twitter, we are at sportscardnat1, so it's sportscard. N A T I one Instagram at Sports Card Nation Podcast, or you can email the show hobbyquickhits at gmail.com. Again, thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, everybody, for listening in. We are, if you're listening to this on Monday release day, we are about 42 days out from the national. Going to talk about pricing. Going to see all those phones out, lit up, uh, comping uh, uh, on their phones on the dealer side of the table and the customer side of the table. But I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this episode, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back Friday with a, another Sports Car Nation with guests, and we'll be back here a week from today, show release day, with another episode of hobby quick hits so with that being said i bid you adieu wish you well take care see you soon